Hello, today I will be showing you a general formula for designing your own single stage to orbit space planes in Kerbal Space Program. In this video, I will first show you the prerequisites to using the general formula, the purpose of my SSTO formula, the three parts of it, and finally, application of the formula, where I will show planes that use the formula. Prerequisites. So first you have to know how to build stable planes in KSP. Then, if you're playing career mode, you have to have researched the LVN Nerve nuclear engine and researched the CR7 Rapier engine. This is the hybrid engine that can switch between open cycle and closed cycle. So, the purpose. So this formula is for medium range space plane SSTOs. So it's for intermooner, so you can fly to the moon or minimus, and interplanetary SSTOs, like flying to Duna. So this one is for flying to Duna, while this one is more for flying in the Kerbin system. It's for relatively small payloads going long ranges. Here is my formula in order of importance. Firstly, there is ascent trajectory. How do you fly? So fly straight off the runway to gain speed, and the high speed will lift the nose up for you. This means you do not have to make any manual elevon adjustments, meaning there's less drag on your plane overall. And that allows us to get away with this, our thrust to weight ratio tuning. So how many rapiers will we actually need? So the stationary thrust to weight ratio of all rapiers combined should be about 0.55. By keeping our maneuvering to a minimum, it reduces drag enough that we can get away with lower thrust to weight ratios on our initial ascent. Now it is time for the fuel ratio, and this is the least strict component. So how many liquid fuel tanks do we need in comparison to liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks? So minimus range SSTOs should have a total fuel to oxidizer ratio of 2.5 to 1. Higher ratios are for less aerodynamic craft or craft that are looking to go farther. So the Blue Jay SSTO that I will show first for the demonstration has a ratio of about 2.42 to 1 liquid fuel to oxidizer. This is because it's quite a light craft that does not have all too much aerodynamic drag. So now for the formula in practice. So here we are with the Blue Jay. So first I'm going to show you how it actually fits with the formula. So we turn the atomic motor off and check the TWR. It's 0 0.52, which is close enough to 0 0.55. So now we're on the runway. Now let's check in the resource section and you can look at your liquid fuel and oxidizer. Take the number for your liquid fuel and divide it by your oxidizer and hopefully that'll reach around 2.5. So now we're taking off just le as usual. Rapier's in air breathing mode. Just want to go straight down the runway, and it's alright if you cannot like force your nose up immediately, you can fly right off the end. off the end. Now you don't want to pull up too much to gain altitude. You want to keep your prograde. You see that yellow marker down in the nav ball. You want to keep that around zero. And you can time warp. So you see here it's going down, but then it goes back up again as we gain speed. So this is good. The prograde marker is very low, which will allow us to gain a lot of speed and therefore increase the thrust provided by our rapier engines. Now you just go hands off the control, time warping. You can see that we're steadily gaining speed, and this is a good sign that your design is working. The thrust should be reaching about its maximum at this point. At this point you should be checking the thrust on your rapier engines, watching it go down. Because once it goes down enough you're going to want to switch modes into closed cycle. So it's getting very low now, and you can stop time warping. 
Now we switch to closed cycle. Might want to turn on the nerve engine as well for some extra thrust. It doesn't really hurt. So now we can time warp further because it's going to take a while to reach the correct apoapsis. Now that our apoapsis is at the correct position, we use only our nerve motor and we immediately start burning to raise it. So we want to get as close to an orbit as possible. The nerve gives us quite a low thrust to weight ratio, meaning we cannot burn directly at apoapsis. Now you can see our periapsis is coming up, and let's stop burning, and let's go for our circularization. Now let's get the periapsis up above 70,000 meters. Get a bit more round, and there we go. We are now in orbit. Now that we're in space, let's check out our delta V. We have 3,160 meters per second of delta V, which, according to this delta V map, is plenty enough to get us to Minmus, Duna, or Eve. Now it is on to the Crow SSTO. This is just scaled up. Two nerves and four rapiers. The TWR is 0 0.53. Now in the cargo bay, you can see that we're carrying about 3 tons of ore. So we check our resources for our liquid fuel to oxidizer ratio. Engines on. And head straight down the runway. Pull up. Bring our prograde marker right to zero. We might lose a bit of altitude, but you can have faith that we'll gain the altitude once again. A close one there, though. Now you just take your hands off the controls, and we're going to accelerate to a higher altitude. Now you can see that we're losing thrust in our rapier engines. So you have to be prepared to switch to closed cycle now. It's almost time. And switch. Maybe turn on our nuclear engines too for some extra thrust. Now we're just going to wait until our apoapsis is at or above 70,000 meters. Rip yours off. Now let's circularize our orbit once again. And we're done. So here you can see we have 2,800 meters per second of delta V, which is enough to get us to Minmus, Duna, and Eve. Now we have the Magpie, an even larger SSTO. Six rapiers this time. In the cargo bay, we've got two of those containers, both filled with ore, at about 7.5 tons of payload. Let's check the TWR. 0.49. This is more of an extension upon the formula. It's kind of pushing it with the boundaries of the formula. It's carrying a lot more liquid fuel than one typically would. As an extension upon the formula, it takes a bit more care to fly. The lower TWR makes it more susceptible to failing to accelerate, meaning we are not going to be able to use physics warp for the majority of this flight. 
we might we might want to get a bit more altitude as safety in case we begin dropping as we gain speed. So you want to remain as hands off as you can unless you notice the speed not being too great. Say the nose is gaining too quickly. You might want to bring the nose back down a bit so that your prograde is closer to zero and you can get some more speed before finally committing to gaining altitude. You can see here that our acceleration is a lot more sluggish than before. This is a larger craft with a lot more drag. So you see here the acceleration is dropping a lot. Around here you might want to drop the nose just a bit. And now we are gaining speed a lot more quickly and this will put us on a good path to reaching orbit. The real goal here is to gain thrust in the rapier engines, and to do that we need to gain speed. Altitude will inevitably reduce our thrust, so gaining altitude is the last of our priorities, and should only be continued with if the other two factors are safe. We still do not want to time warp, because when you time warp there might be a bit of like a, a change in the angle of your craft, which will mean that you will have to counteract it, and when flying these SSTOs, touching the controls is not a good idea, since it'll increase your drag and slow you down. Now let's switch to closed cycle. A bit of an oopsie with the nuclear engines there, but we are good. Now you'll want to check the map and check your apoapsis. Just bring it up to 7000 and then we'll be good. Our apoapsis is now high enough, so we'll switch to solely nuclear engines for our highest ISP. Now it is safe to physics warp. And once again you can physics warp using alt and period. Now we are circularized. Now you can see we have a ton of delta V left. 3,790 meters per second of delta V. Once again, enough for going to Minmus, Mun, Duna, Eve. And let's not forget we still have some cargo in there. Let's just drop off our cargo in low carbon orbit. There you can see we have 4,300 meters per second of delta V now, which is even better without our cargo. Now to recap, in order of importance for the formula. So first, ascent trajectory. How do you fly? So fly straight off the runway to gain speed, and the high speed will lift the nose up for you. Thrust to weight ratio tuning. Stationary thrust to weight ratio of all rapiers combined should be as about 0.55. Now fuel ratio. Minimus range SSTOs should have a total fuel to oxidize ratio of 2.5 to 1. Now that's the end of the SSTO formula video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like. If you want to subscribe, then do so. Goodbye.